All right, welcome everybody to our training Thursday. My name is Paul Croto. I'm so excited to be with you here today. We just got back, a bunch of us just got done with going to unleash the power within with Tony Robbins. So as you can imagine, we're a little bit uh, a little bit high, a little crazy today uh, off of all the excitement that we had over the over that four days last week that was just incredible. So we're here to share that with you and, and the, some of the things we've learned uh, because I think they're gonna be, I don't think, I know they're gonna be extremely helpful to all of you if you feel like you're kind of stuck in your business. You know, and I, I read a, a, a Facebook uh, post this morning from Kristen. Um, so I can, I, I messaged her and made sure it's okay. I could mention that and, and talk about it. And we're going to talk about it um, uh, together a little more. But, you know, it, it's not a, um, an uncommon thing for people to feel like they're stuck or that they're almost feeling like they're, I want to say living a lie, but it just doesn't, things don't feel right. You know, and I'm going to explain why we feel kind of weird at times and why we sometimes get in our own way and why really success has a lot of different components to it. So to get everything in place for you to be successful takes a little bit of work, but it can absolutely be done. But it just it's going to take you to make a decision that I really want to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, share my screen if I can do that. Yeah, I can. Um, so I'm going to pick this. Okay, cool. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, is that big enough on your screen there, Becca? Okay. Just let me know if people are having it. If anybody has an issue, just let, let type in the chatter. I'm, uh, when I'm in this mode of sharing my screen, I'm basically, I go blind, except all I can see is what I'm sharing. So um, let me know if, if anything gets, uh, needs fixing. But this, uh, this is a box. So we all live in a box. And that box, we've created ourselves. It's called our identity. So everything that has to do with you is in a box. So it's all your past, your present, your identity, the state you live in. Now, we all live in a state. So I live in New York. And so everyone lives in a different state physically, but emotionally, we also live in a different place. You know, so we got to figure out what our emotional home is. And for a lot of people in their box, their emotional home is angry. I'm angry all the time. They always find a problem with something. You know, we all know someone like that, that that's just their home. So we all have a place we go back to and maybe where you get really excited sometimes about this or really you know, upset about this or depressed about this, but we always come back to some sort of home, whatever that home is. And it's important for you to, to understand what that is. And if you don't know what it is, because it's super difficult sometimes to figure out yourself, go ask someone you're close to or a couple of people you're close to and ask them, what's my emotional home? And they'll tell you, you know, uh, well, uh, do you want me to want the truth or do you want me to, to lie here? But I can, you know, and I, and there's many people on this call, Becca included, and, and, and others that talk to me on a regular basis. And, you know, is there ever a time where, you know, anybody calls me and they're like, oh, Paul was in a bad mood today. Like it, it doesn't happen. I'm never like, oh, I'm like super upset about something or this or that. Like, it's just, it's wired inside of me that, that I just don't get that way. You know, and, and but there's other people I call. I'm like, now I got to dial the phone. I'm like dreading making this phone call because I know the other person is always upset about something. You know, they're just that kind of person or they're always, you know, they got like that dual personality. Like sometimes they're super nice and other times they're really crazy. So, you know, there's, there's people have these different states that they're, that they're, that that's their home. So how well you plan you know, how well you're organized, you know, if you see your environment in, in your desk and your house in your car, like, you know, <laughs> you can say, you know, don't, don't pay attention to my car because, you know, it's, 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 that's part of your, of who you are. You know, it's almost like a pattern that um, my car is this messy. And it's, it's, like a, it's like a line. So now, of course, you can clean it and it gets clean, but it always goes back to that level. Now, Maybe your level's like super bad where they're like, there's stuff all over the place. It's craziness in there. 
or maybe your level is like perfection. Like it is, you know, you take a toothbrush and you, you're cleaning out the vents and I mean, the whole thing is like meticulously perfect. So the, everyone's got a level um, of, of how clean their cars or their houses or their, or their desk is, their office. Their spiritual life. How close are you to God? How spiritual are you? Mental wise, like where your personal growth is at, where your leadership uh, levels at, where your ability to stay calm and the, you know, the practice of meditation helps our helps with mindfulness to where you are with all that, with your health, obviously your health score, your body, your, how you look and weight and all that kind of stuff. Um, your relationships. So you got your spouse, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your, all these different relationships, people in, you know, health coaches here, we have all that going on. And then of course our finances. And that goes for how much money you're making, how much money you're saving, how much debt you're in, um, your credit score. I mean, all that rolls into finances. So there's these, all these different areas of your life and, and you're at a certain place in all these areas. And that is your identity. Now, the whole thing is, and, and my life's mission is to elevate people, to get them out of this box. So I'm looking for people who I go to and say, how do you like this box that you're in? Is basically what I'm saying. I don't say it in those words, but that's basically what we're asking people. Do you like this box? If they say yes, there's nothing you can do because they like where, the, they like where they're at. So the first step, and this is really, you know, I think the overriding theme, and we're going to hear from other people that were at the event too, the overriding theme of Unleash the Power Within is knowing the science of success and the art of fulfillment. You know, to really um, understand what does success look like to me? What is, what is my definition of winning? So to get out of this box, what is it going to take to have a different box? So next to this box is another box. And I probably should have put that on there, but it's you with the perfect story. So it's you in that perfect state that you're like, man, I feel awesome all the time. If you're in this awesome state. You're a great planner. You're totally organized. Your spiritual life's fantastic. Your mind's awesome. Your health's perfect. Your body's perfect. Your relationships are all perfect and your finances are all perfect. So there's a, a different story you can write. And it's absolutely possible for every single person listening to this message to achieve that. Whatever story you want to create, you can, you can absolutely do it. The potential is there. The question is, will you? And what does it take to do that is, is really what, what this whole presentation today is about. So there's like, it's like baking a cake. So creating this awesome, perfect light that you want is got ingredients involved. So what are the ingredients and in the words that we use all the time? So you're, you hear me and Cheryl for years now, we've been saying this word and that word and that word. And you hear, you see different words on, on Facebook and you hear Dub Erickson say certain words. And there's, so there's all kinds of terms being thrown out there. And even to be honest with you, through UPW, Tony for four days, he just talked about different concepts all the time. But he doesn't talk about any of the concepts in order. Like, so... My big thing my whole life was, I, I was, you know, I, I've been, this is my, actually my fourth company that I'm with right now. And I would be in other companies and just starting out in this, in this industry. And I would go to these conventions and they're fantastic, but then I would go home and it would be Monday morning and I wouldn't know what to do. Like, okay, I, like all that information was great, but like, where do I start? So it was, it was always, you know, kind of a, a challenge for me. And, and, and to this day, it's still a bit of a, a bit of a challenge figuring out the order of things. But since I went to UPW for three times, my third time, and saw Tony four, five times in the past year and a half, um, spent a lot of time with them. I'm starting to get some clarity on, on the order of all these, these things and what exactly, which words you should be focusing on or concepts, I should say. So the number one concept that um, Tony goes over from Unleash the Power Within is this concept of peak state. So, you know, a lot of people think, well, I just feel this way based on what just happened. So if something good just happened to you, you feel good. If something bad just happened to you, you feel depressed. So you just kind of go with the flow and, and let the world dictate how you're going to feel. 
which is absolutely the worst way to live. So what Tony teaches everyone in Unleash the Power with them is that you have control over your state. And at any moment, you can pick what state you want to be in. So if I want to get into like a real angry state, like what would I need to do to do that? And he does this in front of, you know, 20,000 people. And he asks them to feel like depressed. Would I need to breathe shallow or deep? You know, now if you got 20,000 people, they can't agree on anything. But everybody in one second yells out shallow. It's like crazy to hear it that everyone agrees that in order to feel depressed, you don't, deep breathing is not part of depression. So it just stands to reason that, wow, what if we did deep breathing? You know, what would that, how would we be depressed anymore? And the answer is that's, well, what is one of the steps towards changing your state is, is how you're breathing and how you're standing and how you're moving. So the two things that Tony does through the whole Unleash the Power Within is play music, uh, which is 1M. And then the other thing is motion. So when you look at the word emotion, it's just energy and motion. So if you're sitting in a chair for forever or laying on the couch or doing something, your state is going to be bad. You know, I literally set this 25 minute timer. So I say what I'm going to do for 25 minutes and I go. And then my computer has a program on it that shuts it off. I mean, it literally becomes unusable. And I have to take five minutes and go jump on my trampoline by one of those Peloton rebounders that I rebound. I do three minutes every 25 minutes. And I, because I, and I, and I'm like, no, I got this project I got to do. So I turn the program off. Nope, not going to do it. And I try to go like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And I'm not productive at all. Like my thoughts aren't as fresh, but if I go jump for three minutes and come back, I'm on fire. I'm back at a 10 and I'm so much more productive and, and creative and all the things that I need to be to be successful. So motion is super important. Music su super important. So when we talk about peak state, we're talking about high energy, um, feeling powerful, feeling absolutely certain. So absolute certainty is actually nothing more than a state. It's an emotion. So, you know, there, I mean, there's people that have like tons of experience. Like I was, I was just like everyone, some of you know that I'm a big tennis fan. So I was watching tennis yesterday and this guy that's ranked like third in the world is playing. And they're like, well, it seems like he got his confidence back. I'm like, his confidence back? He's ranked third in the world. How could he, where did his confidence go to? You know, it just, so it doesn't matter how long you've been doing something or how much of a quote unquote expert, you know, someone's in, in a field, they can still feel like unsure. But someone that really doesn't have the ton of experience or the, the skills at, at, at the level the other person does, but they're, they come with an attitude of, I'm absolutely certain this is going to happen. And they make it happen. They beat the person. The person with the most absolute certainty wins all the time. As a matter of fact, I mean, when you're sitting across from a client and you're having a conversation, someone's going to win and someone's going to lose. And I don't want to, I hate to put it that way because everybody wins. I mean, it's a, when you're, you're, we're impacting people's lives. We're getting them on these products and we're, we're, it's, it's awesome. But if they have a story about how they can't afford BTT because it's $60 and it's too expensive. Either you're going to buy into their absolute certainty that they can't afford it, or they're going to buy into your absolute certainty that they can't live without it. So you're either selling or you're being sold. That's the only thing that can happen in life. So there's no way you're going to sell, you know, I'm, there's no way I'm going, to be, you're going to, I'm going to be sold on the fact that you don't have money for this. I, I don't accept that. And I'm absolutely certain that there's nothing more important in your life to spend money on then our minerals or our BTT or some calcium, you know? So whoever has most, the most absolute certainty is going to win. And that's why Cheryl and I are so great at enrolling people. I mean, you can put anyone in the world in front of us and we're going to enroll them. And, it, and it's not because we have like this amazing script. No, it's, it's all because of their script or, oh, it's because of who they are. No, nope. well, you know, when I meet someone new, they don't even know who I am from Adam. 
what I come across with this absolute certainty that moves them. They're just like, and, and, and even when I, when I ask, when, when someone says, uh, you know, they got a health score, their health score is negative 78. And they got like 17 problems, you know, every, everything under the rainbow. And I tell them, hey, I can help you. And they can feel that I'm absolutely certain I can help them. Now, can I help them? I don't know. Like, I know our products are going to work. I know their health score is going to go up for sure. Can I fix all 17 of these problems? You know, I don't know how long they've had them for. I don't know if they're really going to stick to the protocol that I'm going to give to them. They're going to eat right and exercise and take all these supplements. You know, I don't, there's a lot of unknown things, but I'm still coming across absolutely certain. Hey, we can do this. We got this. I don't care how bad the situation is. Someone come to me, stage four cancer. Doctor gave me one week. Hey, we got this. You know, otherwise, what, what's the other option? Yeah. You know, uh, just let's hang it up. You know, let's call it quits. I mean, that's not going to happen. So we might as well come to every situation with absolute certainty. It's just a decision. It's literally just a decision you're going to make that this is the state I'm going to live in of absolute certainty. And I'm going to go into this a little bit more later. And I don't want to take up too much time today because we can, I can speak for 17 hours on this. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just so critically important that you come across confident, you know, and, and this, this concept of confidence um, was really explained well in one story that was probably my favorite story of the whole, um, whole convention. So this guy, Nick, and I can't pronounce his last name, it's Greek, and it's like this long, um, but he has no legs and one arm. So he's, he's not in great shape. Uh, but he got the best attitude in the whole world. And he told this story about confidence. So let's say you got your, 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 one of your best friends uh, says, hey, let's go to dinner tonight. Let's go out to dinner. Well, let's meet at the restaurant at seven o'clock. And you're like, absolutely, I'm in. So you go to the restaurant at seven o'clock and your friend doesn't show up. So you're waiting, waiting, waiting. They don't show up. That's odd. So they call you back and they're like, hey, I'm sorry, I got tied up. Can we meet tomorrow night at seven o'clock? So you go to the restaurant tomorrow night at seven o'clock, you're waiting, 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 they don't show up. And then they call, oh, I'm so sorry, like something else came up. So can we meet another night? And you're like, man, I know we're best friends, but this is getting a little crazy. Now, how many nights in a row would this have to happen before you don't go to the restaurant again to meet your friend? You're gonna lose confidence eventually that they're gonna show up. And yet we do this to ourselves every single day. We say we're going to do this and we don't. So we lose confidence in ourselves. That's all confidence is, is just keeping the promises you make to yourself. So it's so important to make these non-negotiable things in your life, to have these things like making your bed in the morning. You know, it's something super small that you can absolutely do. And it sounds crazy, but you can gain an enormous amount of self-confidence from making your bed every day. Just doing something that you promised yourself you would do and actually doing it. I mean, I talk to people every day and Cheryl and I have this conversation all the time about people not even making, setting goals anymore or saying what they're going to do because they've let themselves down so much and they feel so horrible about it that they can't even set a goal again because it. what if it doesn't happen? Then I'll even feel worse. I mean, they've just gone down this, this spiral to the, to the bottom. And, you know, we just, we just want to make sure that we're, always keeping our promises to ourselves and building that self-confidence up. So feeling unstoppable is, an, is, a, is a, you know, my, my, so my five words that I use for peak state. And I'd love to hear from other people um, that went to see what their take is on that. But, um, you know, a couple of notes I have here is that things are not going to bring you happiness. It was a big quote that hit me hard at UPW. You know, you might be excited for a few minutes. You got a new car new house, new pair of shoes, you win the lotto, you know, all those things are great. And you're like excited, but they lose their luster over time. Even a new relationship. I mean, just, you know, you're dating a new person, you know, you're, let's just go back when you met your spouse, you had this unbelievable time. Like this is the ultimate person in the whole world. And you're like ecstatic. And then, you know, two, three, four, seven years goes by and it ain't like that anymore. You know, that, that, so it's, it's, it's not about new things or new people. It's about progress. It's about making progress in all the areas of your life. And that's when it's going to make you happy. 
So that's why I'm so obsessed about Elevate. Everything is about Elevate. So I always want to be thinking, how can I make things better than yesterday? That's the only, the only competition I have in the world is Paul from yesterday. That's it. You got to beat Paul from yesterday. So we're all in this, in this, you know, alone, and we want to focus 100% on making progress. So the key is at the peak state. So that's my big, big message for today. And to Kristen and to, and to everybody that's feeling that I'm not being as good as, I, as successful as I want, or I'm not doing this, or I'm not sticking to my diet or, or whatever. It's all because of your state. So the, the second, and I'll show you that why I say that in a second here. So the second recipe or ingredient to this, this recipe is raising your standards. So you got to draw a line in the sand and that this, this is, you know, I'm never going to be over 200 pounds again. I mean, I drew that line in the sand. It's not going to happen. Now, what would make me eat bad and weigh more than 200 pounds? There's only one thing that can possibly happen that would make me eat bad and gain weight. And it's the state. If my state gets bad, ah, the heck with it. You know, I don't, I don't need to look good. I look fine. I'm gonna go have that, that donut or that pie or whatever it is, you know? Whenever you do something bad, you're just in a bad state. Because in a good state, I would never do that. So it always is going to go back to the state. Where was my state at that time? And just being so aware of this at every moment of every day and knowing that you, in one second, you can change from whatever you want to go to. You want to become more relaxed right now? Great. We can put some relaxing music on. We can take some deep breaths. We can do a whole bunch of things because we know how to get relaxed. We also have to know how to get into peak state. We have to know how to, you know, what, what triggers us to go into bad states of, of anger or frustration or, you know, burnout and, and be aware of all those so that we can always maintain this peak state. The next thing is results. So we talk about that a lot. So, okay, you want to raise your standards? Great. So the standard that I recommend every single health coach set for themselves right now is car qualified one star. I mean, it just, there has to come a point in your life where you're like, that's it. That's the line. Like, I'm not going below that. You know, the biggest changing moment in my life was the moment that I was four star. And I was like that for, for over a year. And I knew the convention was coming up. And I, and I, I just, why would I want to live a four star lifestyle if I could live a five star lifestyle? And I made a decision in that moment. I didn't get any new skills. I didn't you know, learn some new strategy or anything like that. I just made a decision. So I got into state. This is going to happen. I'm hell or high water. It's going to happen. I raised my standards. Four star is not good enough. The standard's five star. And I knew the result I wanted to get. I want to get the five star. Now I had a strong purpose, you know, that I only live one life. So I, you know, it, having that strong purpose is so critically important. And then, of course, there had to be a strategy involved in that. But if you got the, the first, you know, so there's, there's five S's or actually six S's, if you count skills. But if you get this first, these first four S's correct, I mean, you can go two or three star without even having a great strategy. Because people have done that here. But now that we got the coaching program and this unbelievable strategy in place, it's just like throwing gasoline in the fire. So these five S's or six S's will take you so far, but still some people have all these and they're still not successful. That's because their beliefs are screwed up. Okay. So my belief is that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's my number one belief in the world. Now, when, when the Bible says all, how many things is it leaving out? So my belief is super high. I, I also believe it's all figure outable. I'm absolutely certain I can. You know, and I, and I go into every situation expecting to win. And one of the things that you can always go back to is that cookie jar, you know, where, listen, I did all these things in the past. I can do this too, for sure. 
And then last but not least, that confidence uh, that I was talking about with that restaurant story of keeping your promises to yourself that I'm going to make my bed every day. I'm going to drink 100 ounces of water every day. I'm going to exercise every day. I'm going to take all my supplements every day. I mean, that if that isn't your number one standard, I don't know what else should be. I'm going to take the 90 in my add-on products every single day. Non-negotiable. You know, you do that consistently and you're going to feel more confident in life. Like, boy, if I could do that, maybe I could do this too. So it starts with something small and then it builds. And next thing you do is a little bit harder. Next thing you do a little bit harder and you keep on doing a little bit harder things and you gain more and more confidence in yourself. So the next one, and this is a, this is a whole other, you know, so I'm going to actually make up a, a, a huge notion sheet for everybody. If you want to get involved in this, but knowing your values um, and there's, so I'll, again, I'm going to send you these notes. There's 257 known values out there. So the, 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 the exercise is to put them in order for yourself. So which is the most important thing in the world to you and second, third, fourth, all the way down. So super difficult exercise because there's a lot of words on here that are bright. You know, you're like, well, I value this too. And I value this and I value that, but you can't do it that way. You got to know what's number one, because even if you, if you switch one and two around, it'll change your whole life. So the number one value for most people is security. So knowing that their value is security, what's their chances of leaving this box? Approximately zero. They have no shot because their number one value is security. They want to stay in the box. I don't need, they won't even think about leaving the box. So it, it's, it's uh, you know, so the, 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 the number one value to have is growth, is to elevate. When you value growth, everything else improves. So you're like, well, no, Paul, I value love. Love's number one for me. Okay, great. But if you don't grow love, it's going to die. You know, so it's everything has got to grow. So when you become growth minded and have this growth mindset, which was a great video, actually, um, I'm going to post in here about that fixed mindset versus growth mindset. It's a little two minute video that's pretty powerful. And, you know, even Cheryl told me when, when we first met that she just thought you're born in, in, in this box with these things going on at a certain place. And that's just the way you are. You know, you are who you are. And there's no changing that. It's just the way it is. It is what it is. How many people say it is what it is? I mean, it's like the most popular say, statement out there. So, but that's not true. You can change all these things. You can make all these things whatever you want them to be. But you got to have your values in the right order. You got your values in the wrong order. And then you got to have your needs in the right order. Most people have certainty as number one. They don't have their number one need as being growth. So it goes all into these. I think you had a huge section on needs, which was super powerful. We talked a couple of Mondays ago about what we're linking pain and pleasure to. So if your result that you want is to look incredible and you hate exercise, you, you know, exercise is ultimate pain to you, you're in big trouble. You know, you got to associate massive pleasure to exercise. If you want to look good, you got to associate massive pleasure to taking all of your supplements and eating good if you want to be healthy. If you look at taking your supplements and eating healthy as a big pain in the butt, you, how long are you going to stick to it for? So it's really associating pain and pleasure to the right things. That's super critically important. And then there's focus. He talks about a lot about focus um, on what you're focusing on and what that means to you. So we can go over these, these notes again, but my main focus is on the four quarters of the year. So all along over the past 90 days, my number one focus has been July 1st. So I actually wrote a story that says, hey, today is July 1st and I blank. And I wrote the journal as if it was July 1st, but it wasn't, it was like New Year's Eve. So I write these, these stories out like six months ahead of time. You know, and, and, and sometimes that's a little bit too much. So I like doing the first quarter, you know, where at the end of the first quarter, here's what I'm going to be. So, you know, focusing on like one day 
Like you can't change the world in a day, you know, even a week, you know, a month is, is good, but I found myself even in a month, I couldn't like create awesomeness, but in 90 days I can, I can do a lot. I can get a lot done in nine days. And I, and if I go too long, like six months or a year, it just seems like that's like 10 miles out in front of me. At least that's how my perception is for myself. Maybe it's different for you, but for me, 90 days works awesome for my brain for whatever reason. So I'm super hyper. I got 21 days now. So in 21 days, we're going to be back here on zoom and we're going to have something called a halftime call. And we're going to, we're going to review the first half of 2021. Now that review is going to be good or bad. And it all depends on what state you're in. You know, what, what were your standards? What results did you want? Was your purpose strong enough? Did you have a strategy? Where were your beliefs, values, needs? What did you attach pain and pleasure to? And where has been your focus? Now, if the focus for everybody here, that's a health coach, your number one focus is on finding your 12 and getting all 12 on a hundred dollar or more auto ship. Now it's also nice to get half of them to be preferred customers and half of them to be distributors. But if you don't, that doesn't work out initially, that's okay. Because as their health score goes up, they can always decide to become a distributor. So even if you got 12 preferred customers, it's okay. We can work on, on half of them and get them to move up to distributor. Whether you, they want to be a health coach or not, they can still recommend these products to other people and, and, and earn an extra commission. And then Tony talks a lot about meaning. You know, when you focus on something, what does that mean to you? So July 1st means so much to me, like that feeling of accomplishment of all these things that I'm going to have done by July 1st makes me feel so incredible. And that's my focus all the time. So when I'm trying to get into state, I'm not thinking about now or the weather outside or anything like that. I'm thinking about July 1st. How am I going to feel on July 1st? And I feel that way now. And that's what, that's my big trick on, on keeping myself in peak state is where I'm focusing and, and my focus is right here on July 1st. So you got to pick what is it that you're focused on and what does that mean to you? How does that make you feel? Because it better make you feel unbelievable. And it's that feeling, that peak state, that's going to drive everything else. And if you're not in that peak state, the whole thing's going to fall apart. And then of course, you got to take action. And then you got to review, as we talked about before. So I'm big on plan, do, review. So all of this stuff up here, all these words up here are all plan, and then there's do, and then there's review. So it all comes back to plan, do, review. That's not a Tony Robbins thing. That's a Paul Croto thing. But, um, you know, these are the words that had the biggest impact for me from, from Unleash the Power Within and, and from just really everything I've done in my life. I got it down to these 12 concepts, and I've actually put these concepts in an order because I know that now, if, let's say, again, if you have like, boy, Paul, I got this, I got that, I got, I got a lot of these at 10, but then your needs, your certainty is your number one need. Like the whole thing's going to fall apart. The, the, you know, you're, we're baking a cake here. The cake's just not going to be good because one of the ingredients is screwed up. So a lot of you probably have some of these fantastic, like super high. And then some of these, you're probably not doing well at at all. And that's what's keeping you back from being successful. So you got to figure out which of these 12 things is going good for me. And I got mastered. And which one of these 12 things do I need to work on? And any one of these things, I mean, we could, I could help you with that in an hour. So this isn't like it's going to take months of work to fix this. It can be fixed in, like I said, minutes or an hour. So... All right, that's my, my spiel today. I got I can keep on going and going, but I want to hear from other people that were at the uh, event and what they got from that and, and their one big takeaway or what, what their comments were on that. So let's go to Becca. She's been with us for uh, how, keeping this uh, this uh, Thursdays rolling and, uh, and, and upright. So I'd love to hear your take on going to Unleash the Power Within. First of all, was it what you thought it was going to be or better or worse or? Um. Well, I've been to a lot of trainings and this one, this one pretty deep. In fact, I don't think I've ever been so emotional in a training, um, which, which is what I needed to be as I, I think a lot, but, and I keep those thoughts to myself. Um, 
and, and I've never been one of writing it down. Um, and in all honesty, you know, part of not writing it down is because wanting to keep those emotions hidden. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, where I was is not where I truly wanted to be. And um, so my, my role models um, basically have shown me that um, being miserable and settling and constantly unhappy is just the way life is. Right. And I have learned that that's, that's not the way it has to be. Um, and playing all in in the UPW experience, I mean, it was more than just a training. It was an experience. Um, I took more notes than I have ever taken in any training. Um, I was present um, more than, than not, you know. Many times us multitaskers type A, it's got, okay, I gotta get this, 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 and this done, but I'll listen to this in the background. It wasn't like that. I mean, I was just sucked in. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've written my, my story in 2025 and I, and I love where I'm going. Um, but with the UPD, UPW experience, I went deeper into defining and, and putting what that perfect state is for me. Um, and oh goodness, the stacking, stacking my blessings from my past, my current and, and claiming those in the future was just amazing. Yeah. And, and I have more, but I'll stop there and let the next person go. Well, what was your one bit? So what's your one big thing that that is like the thing I'm, I'm focusing on now, and this is going to get me to become move more towards the, the story I want to create. You've got to write it down. You've got to put it in black and white um, and, and identify what your perfect state is. Identify what your triggers are so that you know what needs to be changed i mean we can't change other people but we can change ourselves yep and and knowing what we want is going to be part of helping us decide okay what needs to be changed what's going to help me get to where i need to be yeah super and great. raising standards raising, raising standards. standards yeah yeah it's so cool when he leaves though, and he says, you know, that it's been inside of you, you came with it, you know, because everyone goes to the event thinking they're going to get something out of it. You don't because he tells you, you came with this inside of you already. He just unleashed it. And so it's, it's the coolest thing ever. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing back up. So let's go to, uh, Caroline in Colorado. I don't hope you're still muted. Now try Caroline. Ta -da. <laughs> How is that? Perfect. Okay. Yay. Yes. The state of Colorado. Yes. I am in a better state. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes. Um, fantastic. Amazing blows the socks off of any other anything I've been to before. <clears throat> Incredible level. Um, the biggest thing I think the one, the being all in, <clears throat> you know, we've been working on staying out of the red zone and everything so much. So when we did this exercise before we broke the wood, um, we had to go into a really not pleasant place that we were, if you were playing full out, you had to go. Um, I was down. I love you all. So I will tell you the story. I was down on the floor, like fetal position, because I don't even know what the name of the, the strategy he was using or whatever it was. But you went from the stacking that Becca was talking about, where you're just pulling in all of these great, amazing moments. And I was remembering stuff that I had not thought about in decades. And it was all, you know, hitting home runs and coming around and touching home plate and my team being there and, you know, just 
a lot of stuff that I just haven't thought about in a really long time. But then we went to this other place and it knows just as we've been being taught is that this is the choice and you have that power within you to either stay there or make the decision that um, the past does not drive your future unless you live there. And um, another quote was failure to change equals massive unbearable pain. And it is not a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation. And so when that, when you figure out that that's your choice to be there or to find that story that you want to have and that that's possible, you become unleashed. And that's, it was phenomenal. Yeah, so true. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. I know it had a big impact on you and, uh, you know, so it doesn't stop there, it keeps on going. So we're going to be building on this together. And I'm so excited to be experiencing all this wonderfulness with you. Yes. Yeah, so then I went and climbed a big mountain the next day. I knew exactly what to do the day after. <laughs> cool, cool. That's awesome. All right. Speaking of awesomeness, we are now going to the birthday girl to speak. So everybody say happy birthday, Sarita. Happy birthday. Hey. Here we go. All right, here we go. You missed all that I said, but anyway. So thank you, thank you, everybody. <laughs> it was so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it was good. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I always heard about Tony Robbins, but I've never even had a desire to go to one of his things. But it was, I was pleasantly surprised at what I got. So I was very, very impressed with everything well, that he was saying. A lot of power about. inside of you, Sarita. So we just want to unleash that to the world. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I kind of knew that I've heard that even from in church, you know, but it's like to be in a in a in an atmosphere where it's being pulled out of you, so to speak, you know, because you're in you're focused on what he's saying because he's very engaging, you know. And I, I like back, I took a lot of notes. And one of the things <laughs> I wrote down a couple of things that a belief is a poor excuse for an experience. Okay. I was like, okay, that's good. And people don't value happiness. People that don't value happiness are stressed. So yeah. that's where the gratefulness comes in. You have to be grateful. Your past does not determine your future. If you don't, you know, even though, yeah, you may have lost an arm yesterday, but be thankful you got another arm, you know, and yeah. on and on. So be thankful for what you have. Always be grateful because, you know, God made us to be thankful and, you know, things happen, life happened, but it's the state of mind and believing. So it was cool. Yeah. So you feel like now you have a little more control over where you are emotionally and you can see that things can change in a second. Oh yeah. 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 You know, I think my issue was <laughs> I was still kind of on vacation for my last, <laughs> my last um, position where I was. Right. And I'm finally just, maybe I was, it was a detoxing from where I was because it was a very stressful job. So I think I'm now ready mentally to get back and start something different, which is, you know, being a, a distributor. I mean, being a coach and like that, because yeah. if your mind won't go with you, you can't make it unless you change it. So yeah, now I'm focused on that. Now that's, I'm ready to go. Great awareness there, Sarita. So congratulations on just having that awareness that that was what was going on. And uh, yeah, and fantastic. It took me a while, but yeah, I got it. <laughs> it yes. takes me a long time to figure that kind of stuff out. So I'm right with you. <laughs> Cool. All right, let's go to Canada and go to Tanya in her car. So yes, Canada. we. Um, thank you. Hi. Uh, the weekend was phenomenal, and it was so much fun doing it with this amazing group. Uh, it was it was fun to touch base, and yeah, it was. I really love the beautiful state stuff. And I know Becca talked about that a little bit, but the, the beautiful state was huge. And the 90 second rule, um, that was something that, that I've really been keeping on my radar and, and incorporating. Um, but I love the master of meeting because I'm the master of 
the meaning that I, I assign to any story. And I'm the master of creating the standard that I set for myself and, and where I just basically, I refuse any other option other than to see myself as that, that who that Tanya is that I want to see. So that was really incredible focusing on the, the mastery part of mastering that meaning, mastering your focus, mastering all of that. So I, and because I have kind of really burned the boats recently. So this was a really amazing weekend to do right now. So thank you. Yeah, it's it was perfect. Incredible. So what was like your big, uh, like, was there a big aha or something that you looking forward to like utilizing right away? Or was that, or is there one thing or just like a, just one big, great experience? So I have, I have followed Tony for a lot of years. So I, I you know, I, I've listened to power, uh, personal power and stuff like that. So it, some of it was familiar, but the, the setting and new standard, the, probably the beautiful state was the biggest one just for the biggest one for me for being very intentional about the stacking and, and staying in that state and, um, and how long I'll allow myself to be in a different state before I use that stacking. And so I've been playing with, okay, do I have like a little cookie jar of things that I, I can just pull out randomly it, like magic moments or you know beautiful moments to pull out just so that it's like okay this is an extra reward for the beautiful staying in the beautiful state I yeah guess. yeah that's that's awesome and i you know my big thing was i so i was like you i've been following for a long time and i've heard all these mm -hmm. things before but i get again i never really put them in an order per se and mm -hmm. it became extremely clear to me over the weekend that because um, I keep on wanting putting other things ahead of state, you know, like, well, my health's super important or this is super important. You know, like all those things I have down there is are important things, you know, well, I need to do this first or, you know, get my needs in order or get, get my results, what, what results I want. But like, I'm trying to get other people to write their story. Like, I want to hear your perfect story. So send me your story. And I don't get it. So they're like, well, I really didn't feel like, like writing all that out. So that just says that they're in a bad state. If you're in an awesome state, you just go out and take an awesome walk in nature and you come back and you write your story or better yet, you go to the park and write your story there in nature and with your feet on the ground with no shoes on. I mean, you're, you're going to have an awesome story you're going to write. But if you're in a bad state, and I, I, there's this one thing about, um, learning is state dependent. So there's a huge study just came out that depending on what state you're in is how well you learn whatever you just went to class for. I'm like, duh. You know, if you're in a bad place emotionally, you're not going to retain much. You know, so, but then I thought about, well, everything's state dependent. Every single thing in your life is dependent on what state you're in. And the aha, to hopefully to all of you, is that you can change this state at any moment. You're not stuck in the state you think you're stuck in. It seems like you're in this box and I'm here, Paul, and it's easy for you to say. It's not easy for me to hear to say. I thought the same thing you did. That my state is my home. This is where I am. This is where I'm supposed to be. But we have the ability to change that. And it's already inside of you. It's not even something you need to go create or find outside or something. You just need to let it come out of you because it's in all of you. We've seen so many people have that moment where it's all come out of them and they're like brand new people. So thank you so much for Tanya for sharing all that. And I know you had a, a great, great experience. So we're gonna continue this, this journey together and uh, keep building off of everything we learned there and, and making, uh, making an impact on the world. We're gonna make a dent in the world here. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's go back to the West Coast and to Dr. Debbie. Well, hi, Paul um, and everyone. It was a phenomenal event. I can't thank you enough for impressing the importance of it uh, on me specifically. Um, what I wanted to share was I had, I've been hearing from Deb Erickson about getting into state, or not state, but elevating your emotions. And I just haven't been able to do it. But boy, Tony Robbins got me there <laughs> in an unbelievable way. 
I was telling Becca this morning, I was running around the house and screaming and yelling and jumping up and down. And our little dog was running after me. He was so excited. So we just built on that. My husband did it with me and we were just, wow, we were blown away. Awesome. Totally loved it. So that was my real takeaway, getting in touch with the emotions and how how wonderful it'll feel to achieve. Um, I guess I never really did that with achieving before success. I don't know, but it was totally amazing. And it's just been a wonderful place to be and stay. And I loved it, Paul. I, 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 and I've known of Tony Robbins for years as well, but boy, that immersion from wee hours on three o'clock in the morning till you know five in the evening was something else. Uh, for getting you there it was it was amazing I highly recommend it to everybody it was it was great so thank well, you I'm so happy to hear that and, and that you had an enjoyable time and uh yeah that you you know and 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 then absolute certainty I mean we talked about this before if there's anybody on this call it should be absolutely certain it's you I mean here's someone that's been a <laughs> surgeon you know her whole life and got got more certificates and 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 things on her wall than anybody in the world but um, it's being absolutely certain that I can step into this other, you know, arena of, of, uh, right. of holistic health and be just as successful and, and, and not just as successful per se, because I'm not sure that that's the right word, but it's, it's having the same level of absolute certainty um, that you had before. You're absolutely right. Yeah. That is, that's very well said. So yeah. thank you. Yep. So it's inside, I mean, it's inside of you and you know it all, just making sure you have that feeling of absolute certainty. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great job. Becca, do we have anybody else? So we have two more people. I know Debbie Vorhe was there and Malika. I don't know if Malika is able to come on with us, but. Well, let's go to Debbie. Howdy. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hi. Well, you know, I love this event. Well, I love Tony Robbins. But anyways, um, and, you know, one thing that I really got out of it was solidification and clarity. Um, you know, I've always talked about gratitude. I mean, gosh, I have happy runner chats. <laughs> and, um, and, and emotion equals motion. Emotion equals motion. And, um, but what really dawned on me is why I've been able to do what I've been able to do for the last almost eight years and maintain my weight and not gain an ounce, you know, and things like that. And um, pretty much it's because I never want to go back <laughs> to what I was. It's that pain of what I was and I was lost. I lost myself. It's pretty much what I did. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I keep on with what I do now is I keep on growing and I keep on do adding things and to my life and things like that. And I make sure I always look for something when I run or something in the day I'm, I'm grateful for. And that's just adds up and adds up. And in my last happy runner chat, I kind of um, dwelled on that at the end of it, that it's like magic pixie ducks dust that just builds a little mountain. And um, it just makes you so much more energized and happier and um, laugh a lot more in life. And that's what you need to be. And so I've incorporated, what's so great is that he taught me so many things that I'm, I've incorporated in. Now I've always been a good breather, but I incorporated some of his breathing. And I've also um, went running on, on Monday and um, I, I cut a mile, I cut a, a, um, a minute and a half of my mile for five miles. So wow, when you that's awesome. Yourself, I know. <laughs> when you put yourself in that big state, you can really punch through a wall, just like I punched through that board. <laughs> yeah. And um, it made me a lot more confident. And just recently, like yesterday, you know, I actually did a, um, a you know, consultation with somebody who does functional, you know, nutrition. And I was just talking to her and kind of related to her. I looked at the way she was talking back and kind of, you know, mirrored her, mirrored her. Yep. And, and got, we got very comfortable with each other and she's doing a health evaluation and then I'm going to do the review and I'm going to show her what it's all about. And, you know, she's thinking about maybe I can add this to what I'm doing currently. So, you know, hope, you know, 
that will move forward after we, you know, get to know each other a little bit more and get to, you know, talk about the review and the process. And um, yeah, because it's so funny at the end of the conversation, she just seems so not so happy. And I just said, you know, it, I didn't say smile. I just said, you know, you know, I said something that made her smile. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, Super great. so that's the whole, whole, whole thing is that, you know, when you have an emotion, you tie into somebody and you actually, um, you know, present your message, it went as smooth as glass. That's awesome. I sort of, I mean, just love to hear that. So, um, love to hear that. You know, in time, I will, you know, add more things, more concepts and things like that. And I love what Master Cho showed us. I oh. really felt that. I felt that oh, energy. I was like, wow. Yeah. So I'm going to incorporate a little bit more of that. And Ego Skew, I'm incorporating that stuff as well. And yeah. um, so there's a lot of, um, you know, you know, and I love the way he presented things in such a simplified manner when it came to the health part on the last day. So you can always take golden nuggets from these things. No matter how many times you go and how many times you listen to people or go to debates, there's always these little golden nuggets, not du golden dust, but golden nuggets. Yeah. From it. Well, we always change too. So every time I've gone and listened to the message, I, I hear it differently every time because I'm different. You know, I'm older and hopefully wiser yes. and <laughs> um so yeah and i'm in a different place in life all the time too so it um has a different meaning but it's phenomenal to go to and yeah. we're going to be doing more events like this coming up he's actually doing another upw we'll put the link in there for anybody that wants to do the next one it's in uh, i think a month or two and um and then we're doing date with destiny in december so that'll be huge for those that want to do it with us as well so that is the this was really just like a warm-up kind of pre-season type of thing Day with Destiny is the full on, you know, kind of like Hell Week, um, but it's uh, it's life changing. So, but this is good for a warm up to get to get introduced to the situation. Yeah, it's a good introduction. Actually, it's there his introduction. Yeah. So, but it's you know it's a pretty full you know full embodied introduction. Yeah, he's got a fire hose out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Thank, thank you so you. much for sharing. Do we we have one more person, or is she not could make it on? Yes, we have Malika. Oh, great. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. We'd love to get um, your take on, on UPW. I was so determined. I took two days off. And it was the best time because the, it was the first time I was actually able to take notes <laughs> and sit down during the whole process. So um, I was really, um, I was really, um, all in, so I was um, emotional. I was taking a, a lot. <clears throat> I was taking a lot of notes. Yeah, was there one thing that stood out to you that really would like hit your heart, or you know, thought it was going to be a game changer for you? Um, um, the three, the three pillars of progress. Those yeah, getting focused and clear. Yeah, is number one, and um, get the best tools for your results, and get an align, and um, integrate, and um, get your results. And one of the best quotes that I like, uh, Tony, is um, "Nothing has the power over me, other than which I give it." Wow. Through my conscious thoughts, it's good to know that it starts and it ends with me. <laughs> it's good to know that. <laughs> yeah, it's so refreshing. Yeah. We can stop blaming yeah. everything else in the world. Yeah, so, yeah, so definitely. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I know um, we, uh, a couple of people have asked the same question, what's the 90 second rule? So one of the funniest things I think I've ever heard is, so Cheryl, um, you know, is married to Jonathan and Jonathan will get upset about something. And in every marriage, something happens, whatever. So Cheryl always asks him, just let me know how long you're going to be upset for so I can come back at that time when you're going to be in a better mood. So then he, he always causes him to laugh, you know, because she's serious. Like she'll just go in the other room for, and is it going to be an, is it gonna be 10 minutes or an hour? Is it going to be a couple of days? Because I'll go on, I'll, go, I'll take a trip someplace if, if need be. Just let me know how long you're going to need to get back to, to reality here, to, to, to a good positive state. 
you know, and, and so it always throws him, you know, it makes him laugh. He's, it, you get back into a better state immediately. So it's, it's how long you're going to allow yourself, the standard you're going to set of how long you're going to allow yourself to feel upset for. So Tony Robbins has a 90 second rule. I'm going to give myself one minute and 30 seconds to be upset about whatever just happened. Someone just stole $250,000 from me. Um, I'm going to give it a minute and a half to, to punch a hole in the wall and, and say a, a couple bad words. But then I'm going to be okay. You know, and I'm going to take some steps to go and fix that. So it just, you got to set a rule in your life. Like how long are you going to be upset for? So if something bad happens, just let, let me know how long it's going to take for you to get over that. And uh, so, we, so I know when we can talk again. So if you, if you set, a, set up a, a rule with yourself, it's kind of fun. And, um, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's not so much those things for my life. It's the little things, you know, it's those little gnats. It's the whirlwind. So it's, it's being able to be successful and achieve all these things we want to achieve with the whirlwind going around, around us. So um, it's super, super important. But it all comes down to state comes down to raising your standards where it's going to be and then knowing exactly the result you want. And again, I'm going to send these notes out to you and I'd love to get your, your take on them, but um, let's go over to Becca to close things out. So day four, I think really solidified that and confirmed that where we are right here with yeah. longevity yeah. is an amazing place to be. We are so far ahead of the game when it comes to others around the world when it comes to health and nutrition, we've got it. We've yeah. got the best there is. And, and that was just so reassuring to me when they were going through day four and the nutrition of it. It's yeah. like, yeah, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. We've got that, you know, so. Yeah, that was a, a, that was a awesome. big powerful statement was, what is the environment you're creating inside of you? So with, you know, with our nutrients, we're creating that nutrient rich environment inside of us, which is going to help us thrive where everyone else is having massive problems. And like the green product that we have, I love the greens. I drink two of those drinks a day and it just keeps my body more alkaline. You know, we went, they went on for hours about all disease is alkalinity. Now minerals are the best thing in the world to make you non-alkaline. You know, so I, I, I used to do this all the time. I get pH strips, have people lick it. And then they would see how acidic they were and they'd buy minerals from me because every time you drink minerals, it, it takes all the acid out of your body. So the minerals, the, the greens, the, you know, calcium, I mean, all those things are very, very alkaline products, which are going to take acid out of your system. But most people have an environment in their bodies that are super acidic and it's causing all these massive health problems, but you need the nutrients. You need, you need all of it. And um, I just, yeah, I love that statement. What environment are you creating inside of you? And even in your gut, think about your gut. Like what do you, what kind of environment you, you're creating in there? Are you eating sugar that's producing all this bad bacteria? Are you eating gluten? You know, what kind of environment do you have in your gut? Um, so all of it was just fantastic. We should just spend a whole hour on that day four alone on, on that environment topic. Cause you're right, Becca, it, it, it's super reassuring. It's so reassuring that, I mean, even some of the things that were said that day you know, we all completely disagree with because they're, they haven't quite caught up to us yet, but they will. It's just going to, you know, it takes everyone a little bit of time, but eventually everyone gets to Dr. Wallach's level and realizes that he was right all along, you know, but it, uh, it um, yeah, wonderful. So thank you everybody for sharing. I hope this was valuable to you. What the plan is, is to upload this video to YouTube, put the video on the notes, send the notes all, we're going to post it into the uh, Facebook group and then email you um, a link to the notes. You can click on the, on the, the link and you'll see all the notes I just typed out and the video there. So if you want to rewatch this or send it to someone on your team, it'll all be there and we will have a wonderful weekend and we will see you on Monday. We're doing mindset Monday. We're actually going over session two with Deb Erickson. For those of you involved in the program, if you're not, no big deal. We're still going to be explaining everything, but we're doing this, uh, this mindset program. Find a fabulous tonight. Thank you for reminding me of that because I would have been killed if I forgot it. But for those of you that are of the female nature on this call here, you are invited to a, another Zoom this evening called Find a Fabulous. So those of you that uh, have set a new standard that fine is not good enough anymore, that you want to live a fabulous life, that's the call to you. The call for you. So that thank you for posting that link in there.
and the times. Perfect. All right. I'll have everybody else on mute and everyone say goodbye. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for sharing. Bye. 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 Bye.